I have carried this knife every day for the last 30 days, and today I'm going to do an in-depth review of the Kershaw Leak. I'm Isaac, and this is Springfield EDC. So here it is, the Kershaw Leak. Some of you guys might be asking why I decided to carry this knife every day for 30 days. Well, as you know, it's October now, but we celebrate Single Knife September, so basically we carry the same knife for the entire month. And I chose this Kershaw Leak because it was the knife that got me into knife collecting. I bought this on a Black Friday sale when I was 12 or 13, I think, for probably 30 or 40 bucks. And it's been a downhill slope since then. But I wanted to put this knife back in my pocket, remember why I liked it so much in the first place, and see if it still holds up in today's market. I've got a lot of interesting thoughts and opinions about this knife, but first let's go over to the workbench and I'll show you guys some size comparisons and tell you about the specifications of this knife. Okay, so here's a closer look at this Kershaw Leak, and we're gonna show you some size comparisons here. First up, we've got some Spyderco knives. I've got the Para 2 and the Para 3 here. So you can see this is a pretty small knife here, the Kershaw Leak, definitely on the smaller side. And then I've got some Benchmade comparisons as well. Here it is up against the full-size bug out, which I think is a pretty good close comparison, definitely still a little bit smaller. And then of course we have the 940 here as well. Blade length on the Kershaw Leak is three inches, overall length is seven inches, and this knife is right at three ounces. So almost perfectly ounce per inch. This knife carries very well for the most part, and we'll get into that a little bit more, but lightweight and it's very slim. Thickness wise, about on par with the bug out, but thinner blade stock as you can see there. So the Kershaw Leak has been around since the year 2000. This design is 23 years old. It won Knife of the Year in 2002. And as of the time of recording this video, there are over 40 configurations of this knife. So let me go grab a couple other leaks and we'll be right back and show you some more comparisons here. Okay, so here are some different versions of the Leak. And one of the reasons why this knife is so popular is because it's so collectible. You can get this knife, like I said, over 40 different configurations. This is kind of the, the standard that you're looking at with a liner lock. They also have a frame lock version. This one they call the random leak. It has that kind of reverse tanto look. Um, and then this one here is actually very similar in design to this one, both liner locks, but this one comes in magna cut blade steel and you get this cool red to black fade color on the handle. So like I said, there are a bunch of different options as far as colors, blade steels, different varieties. Um, this one is available on our website for right around 130, but base price on these starts right around 50 bucks on Amazon for the all silver frame lock version. So getting into the pros of these knives, they carry pretty well for the most part. And we'll touch on that in the cons as well. Super lightweight, they are super slicey, super thin behind the edge. Most of them come down to a very fine tip, which again, pros and cons, but it's very nice for piercing. And this thing will destroy cardboard, open letters like crazy. It's very good for light EDC tasks. The speed safe action is very fast and reliable. I know not a lot of people like assisted actions in 2023, but the speed safe one of all of the assisted options is my favorite. And like I said, it is a reliably springy action. And overall, I can see why this knife has been so popular for 20 years, but my problem with these knives is that in today's market, there are so many good budget-friendly options in this $50 range, all the way up to this $130 range. You really have to be competitive in this market. So let's talk about some of the cons these knives have. So for starters, you have the clip. These do have clip tip up or tip down orientation, but only right-handed carry. And my issue is that, well, tip up is the only correct way to carry a knife in my opinion. And look how much of this knife sticks out of your pocket in this configuration. Your pocket goes to about here. So you have more than an inch of knife that sticks up out of your pocket. And with a knife that's already so small, that makes it much more likely to fall out. There are solutions to this. You can carry tip down, and this is the way that they come new in the box, but this configuration makes the knife more likely to open up in your pocket. 
Now they do have this safety here that slides down and that bar right there in front of the tip keeps that knife from opening up. But that defeats the whole purpose of having the speed safe in this knife, making it a one-handed open and a one-handed close. You can't do that with this safety on. The alternate solution would be to get an aftermarket deep carry clip like we have on this leak here. This one belongs to my wife. And that's great, but then your safety doesn't work. So if you do want to lock this knife shut so that you don't have to worry about it opening up in your pocket, you can't do that with the aftermarket clip. Frankly, the only way that I could comfortably carry this knife for the whole month is that I switched from carrying this one to carrying this one because of the deep carry clip and made it more reasonable. Next up, we have the tip. The tips on these knives are incredibly fragile. Now that's okay for most of us if all we're doing is opening boxes or opening letters, but for anything that's a harder task than that, this is not the correct knife. As you can see, these tips are so, so pointy and so, so thin, which again, definitely has its place, but in the EDC world, I don't know. The, the random link here does a little bit better job of keeping some strength in the tip, but you can still see it's awfully thin there. My biggest complaint with these is that there's no detent. The speed safe system, if you've ever disassembled one of these knives, is interesting in that the, the tension spring that launches it open also provides a tension to stay closed, but there is no traditional detent ball. Um, which means that you cannot unassist these knives or deassist these knives and have reliable action, which is part of the reason why this secondary safety is required. I think if they had a better detent system, that these knives would be much more reliable. They could redesign the clip and it wouldn't be an issue. But frankly, even if they didn't redesign this knife, I don't see why they couldn't move this lock over to this side. That would make it so that the clip would be easily uh, movable all the way up towards the end of the knife here, you would still have that safety that you could use if you wanted to, and I think that would make it a much better knife. So my thoughts about this knife in 2023 are meh. It's still a good carry knife. If you need something to wear in slacks or around the office, it's not a bad option at all, but at this price point, there are so many knives that punch well above their weight class that I don't know if this is a reasonable thing to buy unless you're wanting something that has a super fine tip and that's fun to collect. Let me show you some better options. So if you like the price of this knife but you're not totally sold on the actual design, I've got a couple of recommendations that you might like. Starting off, another knife in Kershaw's lineup but a newer release for them. This is the Kershaw Heist. It's got an injection molded plastic handle. It's got the Benchmade style crossbar lock, D2 blade, and the action is great. This is actually my personal knife. I have been carrying one of these since they were released pretty regularly, and I really do enjoy this knife. These are right around 50 bucks as well. Next up, we have the tried and true Civivi Elementum. I mean, this thing is very similar size-wise. It's a little bit thicker, but it still carries very nicely. Also very similar in the weight department, but the action on this one is so good. You also get D2 steel on the base model version of the Elementum. And really all around, I just think it's a better knife. You get more strength in the tip. Again, good blade steel, good cutting geometry. I think this is an excellent option. And the last option that I'm gonna show you again in this price range is the Honey Badger knives. Now, I only have the large ones in stock at the time of the recording, so this isn't a perfect side-by-side -side comparison, but they do make smaller versions of the Honey Badger as well. These things boast excellent action. You can get them in D2 or HCR 13. They're on bearings, so you don't even need an assisted action with these knives. You can choke up, or they've got a few different blade shapes. So these are worth looking into. I think this particular version with the HCR 13 and the large size is 42 bucks. So they're highly affordable as well. And I just think that these are a couple of better options in 2023 over the Kershaw leak. Um, a couple of honorable mentions that I don't have to show you today is the Kershaw Iridium. That one is excellent. Really anything that Civivi makes in this price range, I think is a better knife than this guy right here. Um, but another one that's very slim, more similar in, in size to the leak here is the Civivi Bow, B-O, which is another excellent knife as well. So does this knife suck? No, far from it. 
But in 2023, the budget market has evolved so much since 2000 when this knife was launched that it's outperformed by a lot. Now, if this is the knife that you've decided that you want and you need, you're gonna like it, okay? Don't let me talk you out of buying one of these just because it's not my cup of tea. I do think there are better designs. I do think there are better cutting tools, but this is still a good one. One thing that I haven't mentioned yet is Kershaw's warranty. Their warranty is among the best in the game, especially for these US made products. This exact knife, like I said, I've owned this knife for probably 10 years now, developed a hairline crack in the blade after six or seven years of use. Um, I sent it in, they replaced the blade, no questions asked. They're super easy to deal with. I recommend Kershaw. I just don't necessarily recommend this Kershaw. So if you guys have any questions in the comments, please let me know. If you're interested in EDC knives and gear, please check out our website, springfieldedc.com. We're a locally owned, small business, veteran owned as well. So please check us out and support us if you're able to. Thanks and have a nice day.